First time I saw you was at Bridgestone in Nashville with, I guess, the person that inspired you to make a band was with Paul. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It is. I mean, that's unbelievable, isn't it, that it you saw that? It's crazy. And then you end up there in that yeah. same... <clears throat> I mean, what can you say? It's... um. It's a life of seconds and inches and, and, and chances and opportunities and missed opportunities and and missed chances. And in this instant in this instance with Paul, I was able to, you know, be there when a phone call came in to do one song for the Super Bowl two thousand two before the anthem one song and uh it was basically an audition to see if i would be the right guy for it with his producer david Kahn. and uh david called me uh he had gotten my number from abe laboreal jr with whom i'd just been touring all over france with with uh, johnny halliday and milan farmer and um, I had expressed to Abe, who now had just recorded with Paul, hey, I'd love to have a shot at that. Uh, when he said, yeah, we're looking for a guitar player who plays some bass. And I said, I'd love a shot at that. And uh, Abe said, oh, that's cool. And he put my name forward to David Kahn. I went down to David's office, sat with him, talked with him, played a bass. Then I played his guitar, just talking, not even plugged in, just talking, chatting music, and he's watching my hands and him with just David Kahn alone. Okay, okay. And at the end of the meeting, he said, well, this has been great, man. You know, uh, you seem like a cool guy. And Abe says you're great and you look like you play well. And I'm going to put your name forward. There's other guys in line. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens. He put my name forward. That was a Monday. I got a call. Tuesday to see if I could be on a plane Wednesday to go to New Orleans. And that's how fast it happened. Within a week of that call, I was back home. How did Paul, I mean, Paul hadn't, didn't know, didn't, didn't hear you or? Paul left it up to David Kahn. That's trust, man. That is some trust. Well, they'd just done an album together. And, uh, and David had brought in that band, which was Abe and Rusty mm -hmm. and a guy named Gabe Dixon on keyboards. So I think he was uh, fairly trusting of of David Kahn's taste, and you know, I'm very grateful to David Kahn. How did you feel plugging in and playing bass in front of Paul McCartney? Did, was that a, did, what, were you cool? Did, what, did, were you freaked out? Did, were you nervous? Or? Yeah, of course you're freaked out. I mean, this is Paul McCartney. You know, he reinvented bass for pop music, and um, so to me, Paul McCartney is sort of the most important bass player in rock and roll, um, reinventing it and making it sort of more melodic and more counterpunctal and just incredible visionary besides his writing skills and his singing skills and his arrangement and production skills. I mean, all of it. And then he looked cool too. So, I mean, he was sort of like, you know, a mega god to anyone from my generation, and you'd be in that camp. So, yeah, playing bass for him is a whole other thing because bass is not my main instrument. Guitar is. But, you know, I was just lucky enough to not screw it up that first day, and at the end of the first day of rehearsal, after this is well after the Super Bowl. This is like six weeks later. I'd gone home and woodshedded a bunch because I was told now we'll see you for rehearsals i'm like what paul said yeah stick with abe and rusty they'll show you the ropes see you in march and i ran back to town set up a little rehearsal studio microphone standing up acoustic 12 string six string bass and a stack of cds you remember cds and uh and uh I, I just went through every Paul, um, Wings, and Beatles record that I could get my hands on and learned everything. I didn't have a set list. I had no idea what I was going to play on any of it. I didn't know if I was going to play guitar or bass on any given song, so I'd just learn everything I could. And I would pick out a couple vocal parts and just like, okay, I've got the idea of it, you know, and 
after a week, I was like, oh man, this is too much. This is just a lot. Oh my God. You know, and then the second week I had Abe come over and, you know, he kind of listened and he was all chill and happy and approving and gave me some confidence. And then, you know, uh, three weeks after that, after more work, uh, I had my first day of rehearsal and, uh, I remember sitting there playing bass and just said, don't look up. Just don't look up. And uh, I just kept my nose down and did the work that was in front of me. And at the end of the first day of rehearsal, he said, okay, guys, sounds good. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. And it wasn't until then that I felt like I could tell more people that I think I'm going on tour with Paul McCartney. 